Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Defense of the Patients. I'm Cyphus, I'm sitting here with Roland. Well, hello. And I'm very excited today, we have a very special guest, uh, very TI appropriate I'd say. I'd say. And uh, that is Casey Atchison. Welcome to the show, Casey. H- hello, thank you for having me. Uh, really excited to do this because uh, it, when we, so Roland and I first got into Dota, uh, it's, we're getting close to, th- well it's like two and a half years I'll say. Um, and, uh, so the TI4 was kind of our first experience, uh, like watching any live Dota or big, you know, com- competitive Dota. Um, and then, uh, and of course you were a big part of that. Uh, and then TI5, we were there last year and, uh, you know, you were kind of the showrunner for a, a good chunk of that as, as far as welping, welcoming folks up on stage and, for the uh, whole thing, I'd say. I mean, till doing the, very the interviews, end. the 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 big all star game, the ten v ten. It was Dead Mouse that kicked her off the stage, really. You know, <laughs> isn't that the case? Yeah, oh yeah. I was like, Dead Mouse, get out of my way, man. Let me do this. <laughs> yeah, he he doesn't have manners. Uh, the, the guy just started playing, and we're like, what? No. I know I can't see through that thing anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, but folks in Seattle know Casey already because she's a, a personality there, uh, a, a feature reporter for Q13, correct? That's right. Uh, so what what's that like? I, I, I that's got to be a blast being a, a feature reporter on on especially local news in a big market like Seattle. Yeah, I think what's I mean my whole thing is that I like to do the news that's positive and fun. Um, And so that's kind of evolved over the years. I came from radio and um, started out doing part-time features for the same station about seven years ago. And then just, it kind of grew from there. I mean, I really, I used to be live every morning from a different location, just doing kind of wacky things and sharing wacky, fun, interesting stories. And from there, they ended up having me anchor. So I ended up becoming kind of a serious news anchor for a while. And that was fine, but I missed being able to interact with people and share stories. And so very, very, very long story short, I'm now kind of doing both. So I'm anchoring, I'm kind of a third anchor on our morning show. And then I also go out and tape um, stories in the community. So I like the balance. And for me, I think the news can be really depressing. So I like trying to either inform people of something that they may not otherwise have known or making them laugh or making them smile. That's kind of, that's kind of where I try to keep what I do. Well, yeah, I mean, in, in real life, they call it something different, but in, in Dota terms, we call it hype. And, <laughs> and, right, and, yes. and there was, I mean, you were the hype, like master, <laughs> hype master, nobody could, could match your hype. And, and I mean, in, in real life, I guess they just call that like positivity and like <laughs> excitement. It's a very like, rare thing yeah. in the esports community. <laughs> yeah, Those but... are the kind words for it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But so what, what's the, what's the weirdest thing you've seen being a feature reporter there? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a tough one. I've, I've seen a lot of weird things. I've done a lot of weird things. Like I had to eat dried crickets once on the air, um, (laughs) which was rough, um, because I'm a squeamish eater anyway. Um, we've interviewed some crazy people. Like we, um, we interviewed, gosh, Morgan Freeman. Whoa. It was a, this was a satellite interview and this was like I want to say three or four years ago, and he fell asleep. While <laughs> oh <over> God! <laughs> oh no! Did you Which, did you wake him? Well, we did. I believe it was. I believe because it was. We were interviewing him alongside. I think it was Michael Caine. And I have to. I have to say up front, my memory is terrible. My my. I remember things really well from like ten years ago. But I, I when it comes to details from a few years ago, I'm really bad. But we were interviewing the two of them about a project they were working on, and we. Got a few answers from Morgan Freeman, and he was great. And then we asked another question, and Michael Caine started answering. And my coworker did not wasn't looking at Morgan Freeman and did not realize that he had nodded off while Michael Caine was answering. <laughs> oh, so man. kept going. So it just it ended up. And then I I I coincidentally flew out the next morning to go cover something in L.A. and had no idea that it ended up getting picked up by all these national stations. Like, oh, Morgan Freeman fell asleep. <laughs> so I guess that's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe he just finds Michael Caine super boring. <laughs> you know. It was, and, it's, Michael Caine boring. He's no, Michael Caine. It's, it's, it's Michael Caine. Master no, Bruce. That was good. Master Bruce. <laughs> and then it fell off. <laughs> So uh, you, you mentioned you were doing radio uh, just as like an on-air talent DJ, or were you doing anything with like talk radio? What what was the deal there? 
Um, so I actually, that's, I, I feel bad talking about myself. I feel like I'm that long-winded aunt and it's like, dude, shut up. So if <laughs> that's I, what, no, we want that. That's, that's why okay. we want you on the show. Cause we're the long-winded aunt four days a week. Yeah. So we're going to just, we're just going to switch it around this time. I think I'm used to asking the questions. So when I'm not, I'm like, God, I'm hearing my voice a lot. So, um, no, it was kind of weird because I, I went to the University of Washington here in Seattle and, um, you know, I've always been a ham. So that's like not, not a surprise to anybody. Um, and always wanted to get into broadcasting and could not get an internship at a TV station when I was a sophomore, because at that time, I think you had to be a junior and I happened to sit next to a friend of mine who was interning at a local radio station. So I ended up thinking, okay, yeah, I'll just try that for a little bit. And that was just in the promotions department. So we drove around the promotions van, like handed out concert tickets and candy. And it, at one point we were literally handing candy out of a windowless van, <laughs> nice. um, but in a good way. Yeah. And you so, didn't ask anybody uh, to get in, right? Yeah. You, you just, you just, <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, okay. No. okay. <laughs> Thought about it, but no. <laughs> um, but, but part of that job ended up being that they sometimes wanted us to kind of call in to the show and say, hey, like, you know, hey, it's Casey, I'm handing out candy, come on down and see us from five to five, you know, something like that. <laughs> um, and so I just kind of started being the person who did that. And the boss of the radio station heard me one day and said, you know, let's have you just kind of for fun try to do traffic reports. So I did that. They trained me to do that. I ended up being the full time traffic reporter for the afternoon show. And then from that, I kind of became a co-host, sort of, more of a sidekick of that show. And so I ended up working full-time for them while I was still going to college. And um, it, it kind of just evolved from there. And um, I ended up doing the overnight shift for a year. Um, and then I moved over to, and this was just for like a top 40 radio station. And then the one of our sister stations was a classic rock station. And they had a morning show that was a, an entirely talk morning show. So it was on a music station, so it was not talk radio in that sense, but right. um, the entire morning show was all about content and sharing stories of your life and interviewing people, and um, they needed a fill-in for the newsreader, and so I started filling in for them on the morning show while I was working overnights across the hallway. So I would work overnights, and then I would come across the hallway and uh, be on there until 10 with them, and then when she, the person I was filling in for left... They ended up hiring me full time, so I was on that morning show for five years. Well, it sounds like you um, lack motivation. I think. Yeah, I think right. that's definitely the big issue. Uh, yeah. is, such a lazy is I know, lack like of that. motivation. <sighs> I <Yeah. mean. laughs> Seriously, I actually regret not being a little lazy because I ended up being so just like, yeah, whatever, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then I didn't end up really. I mean, I, I mean, I had a lot of fun, but there were lots of things I missed out on. Like my friends would go out, and I'd be like, sorry, I've got to like work this event, and then. Like it was years before I could go to festivals again because I had to work every festival at like a radio booth doing call-ins. And then when I left radio, my friends would be like, let's go to this festival. And I started like shuddering with flashbacks. Like, no, <laughs> no, thanks, no. But, I mean, it was great experience for sure. Oh, I, did, like I mean, it, but your preference probably was television even still at the time, or that's what you would have rather been doing over radio, you think? You know, at the time, so I, a slight aside to this story was, yes, I initially thought, you know, like, this is great, but I really feel like TV would be a better way to tell a story. You know, you can tell it visually in addition to actually speaking and writing. And so while I, after I graduated from UW and I was still working full time at the radio station, I got a, um, an internship at actually a Q13 and um, so I would intern in the morning and I would go to my full time job in the afternoon and I hated it. I absolutely hated the internship. It was awful. And I would go alongside reporters and, and kind of shadow them in the field. And I'll never forget following along with this reporter who had to cover this car accident where seven teenagers died. Oof. And right. And we kind of stood in front of the fiery carnage and reported on it all morning. And that was my first thing where I was like, that's, that's not fun. That's not what I want to do. And then someone who worked there was very kind and helped me make kind of a TV audition tape. And we went out into the field to film a fake story. And she's like, pretend you're doing a story on this park and how it's toxic. So they, start, they started the camera. They say, okay, go. And I started my little spiel. And when I finished, I kind of like made a funny face at the camera and she was like, you can't do that. <laughs> and I kind of said, well, then I'm out. Like, I don't, I don't want to cover car crashes and murders and rapes. Like that just isn't my thing. So I, 
left the internship and changed my mind. I was like, I, I'm not doing TV news. Because at the time, it wasn't really a thing to aspire to be on TV doing features because the stations just weren't paying for that kind of a position. And so... And people I don't want to see positive. They'd rather see... <laughs> they'd rather okay. hear about the car Well, crash. I mean... I mean, what? for the no, most part... that that... I, I think what you're... What, what that's you, my problem with the news. And that's why I don't usually well, watch no, it. Right. I think that's what... I, and right. I think that's what most people dislike is the negativity on the mm-hmm. news. But I think the news... Or I think... A lot of program directors and a lot of stations believe that that's where they get the most viewership. I think that, I agree. you know, I think they assume that that's what they're going to get. When I think in all reality, most people are just sick of seeing it. Yeah, but a nice fluff evergreen piece is always just a, a breath of fresh air. I mean, anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Casey. I was no, just... I I agree with you. I I think I think it's interesting what research shows versus what reality kind of feels like. I think if you're gonna you know sit someone down and ask them point blank like do you care about protecting your family and knowing about the latest recall? You're going to say, uh, yeah, but that doesn't yeah. mean that that's the only kind of story that they want to see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, so I mean, it was just, it, I actually kind of lucked into it in that way because I, I decided not to do TV news and then I did radio for another, I think, I mean, in total, I did radio for almost 10 years and reached a point where I was just like, you know, this isn't, I never intended to do this this long and I don't know how to do TV in the way I want to do it, but I know that I'm not going to get there by staying in this job. And so I quit um, without having anything lined up and I was actually going to be a yoga teacher. So I had it all planned out. I had my application put together. I was going to go to this training in the fall. It was nine weeks. I was going to be a yoga teacher and find myself. (laughs) And, um, and so I, I went in to quit and they said, well, actually, can you just stay until the end of the year until we find your replacement? So I missed yoga training and then the market collapsed (laughs) right after I quit my job. Yeah. So I ended up leaving my job and, you know, luckily my husband was, um, we, he wasn't my husband at the time we were about to get married and he was very supportive and he was like, just, you know, find what you love. And, um, I spent eight months putting together like audition tapes and sending them out to every station in town and getting rejection. And I actually still remember, um, someone told me, just call them, just keep calling them and, and call the big boss, like, you know, show no fear. And so I remember calling the big head honcho of one of the stations in town and he freaking picked up the phone. And you know when you like plan to leave a voicemail? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're, all, you're ready and you're thinking what you're going to say. I'm going to sound so good on this yeah. voicemail. Oh, yeah. I'm going to leave my number twice, you know, just in case I miss it. <laughs> yes. And I totally do that. And so he picked up and I was so thrown off. I just kind of like, blah, 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 like word vomited <laughs> all over my phone. And there was this little pause and he says, oh, he says, well, Casey, I'm sure your tape is here somewhere. But to be honest, my desk is filled with tapes from people who have actually worked in television. <laughs> oh. And all I remembered was the advice I had been given was whenever you hang up the phone, promise you'll check back in with them. Like, never let that be the last word. So he gave me that feedback and I said, OK, well, I'll check back in with you in a week and hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Did and you? Then I called him again. I called him again. <laughs> nice. I was like, idiot. No, not like an idiot. That that's that's, that's determination. Awesome. And no, it's not. Did it work out? <laughs> no, it didn't work out. It was like, oh, you me. I told you, I don't need you. And um, but I just kept kind of, you know, in the middle of all of this, Q13. Someone at that station had listened to me on the radio, and they needed someone to host kind of like this car show special that they were doing for sales and they didn't want someone in news doing it because of the crossover with sales. And so I came in and kind of hosted this car thing. And so they knew me and they didn't have a job for me, but they kind of kept me in mind. So many, 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 many months later, they were, they reached out to me and they said, actually, we were expanding our morning show and we need someone who can kind of tell the brighter side of news. And so, and you're just kind of like, wow, that's exactly what I would like to do. (laughs) (laughs) That's like, super optimistic and awesome was that yeah. I bet well, that's in the a memorable middle, day in the middle of all of that a, guy, a different guy at the station that had turned me down um and this was a big lesson that I learned that I always pass on to people is that if someone tells you no just try someone else and I tried someone else and he was actually very nice and said look I'll talk to anybody and had me come in and just let me kind of pitch what I wanted to do let me do an audition considered hiring me it was very kind um, and then Q13 was very kind and gave me a shot. So, I mean, I, we're talking like I was not in a good place. Like my husband was coming home every day from work and I was in a 
the fetal position on the couch with people's court playing in the background, like crying. Ben and Jerry's. Was there ben some and Ben and Jerry's? Jerry's? Yeah. You know, some yeah. chocolate chunk, you know, <laughs> petting your cat. What was that? What was me? Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. So never give up. I always try to tell people that. Like, it may not happen the way that you thought it would, but, you know, cry your way through people's court. And in the meantime, you know, you never know what's going on behind the scenes. Well, so how, how did it happen that you got involved with Valve? That's another interesting thing. I mean, in the it's in the middle be. of all of this, I was trying to get an agent, which I did not have for radio, and um, found an agent who wasn't like a TV news agent. He was more of like a content agent. So he had contacts to different producers in town and websites. And um, so I started getting through him, started getting into voiceover work, started going to auditions for um, like posting training videos on the web, things like that. And so he had been working, he had had clients that had been working with Valve for quite some time. And so this was, I want to say, at the end of my second year on TV, I think. So I was still trying to figure everything out. And he said, hey, you know, they're, this company in town is looking for kind of a host of sorts for this gaming tournament that they do. And, um, you know, here's the audition, and they're just going to ask you to kind of come in and chat. And so I had no idea. I didn't really understand what it was for. Like I tried to do some research on it and I still didn't understand. So I just kind of showed up at Valve headquarters and went through this audition and left thinking I had completely bombed it, honestly. <laughs> um, I just felt, because I love, I love the guys at Valve and I love working with them, but you know, they aren't the type of people and most, most producers aren't where you finish an audition and they all just like, you know, the, they stand up with the slow clap, like, wow, it's amazing. It's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. So, so it was just, got, yeah, it was just like, okay, well, thank you. Really? We'll be in touch. They just like <laughs> sent you out of the door. Like, okay, we've got like seven people. So could you please leave? Like type, type feeling. <laughs> <laughs> they were much nicer than that. They were, like, <laughs> they were like, Hey, thank you so much. Like, um, you know, we really appreciate you showing up and it was really a pleasure to meet you. And, um, and that was it. And I called my agent from the car on the way home and I said, I did the best I could, but I said, I don't, I don't think they're going to hire me. <laughs> and, oh my gosh. Um, and then a couple days later, they, for some reason decided to hire me. So I feel very lucky. Honestly. When in the year was this? Was this like, uh, cause I know, you know, TI happens around August, sometime in August. Right. When were you auditioning? Um, this was like May. Oh, wow. Yeah, before TI three. Okay, so so they had a couple, a good couple months before they they knew, and and I'm sure it got announced later. So I know that during TI three that there was definitely some of these people that are on Twitch or whatever that are like, she doesn't know anything about Dota. Why should she be doing the interviews? Um, right. How did you how did you handle that and how did you work harder to to shut all of them up, which you have well, done by the way. Oh, that's very sweet. I definitely have not shut all of them up. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them you'll never um, shut up. Yeah. I do appreciate that. I mean, I guess I just decided <laughs> to be genuine. Um, I personally hate associating with or watching people who are trying to put on airs of any kind or they're trying to pretend that they're polished or they're trying to prove something. And so from the very beginning, I just kind of acknowledged that I didn't know what I was talking about. Um and I and Valve actually was instrumental in supporting me in that. Like from the very beginning, they said, look, this community is very smart and they're very passionate. So there is no need to pretend that you know what you're talking about or that you're on, you know, that you understand this. You know, we they suggested they said just, you know, we support the idea of you just being yourself, which was which was great. And 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 for me, the the only thing that I am confident in is I know that I'm good at talking to people, and the only thing that I strive for both in my work and in my daily life is to just try to make people feel better, and I just went with that. And so anytime I would hear people say, "Ah, oh, what do you know? You don't know anything about Dota," I would think, "Well, they're right. Like I agree with you. I don't know anything about Dota." And it may be I kind of acknowledge, like it may be that this isn't the right fit, and maybe it's not enough that I like interviewing people. But I kind of decided that I would treat the players and the community with the same respect that I would if I did know what I was talking about. And um, I think that's the only the only reason it worked is that I had the support of Valve to kind of have that approach. And to be honest, like James, I could tell like when I met him was also just like everybody else, like, yeah, OK, but 
like my first day, he kind of helped. Like he introduced me, he joked around with me and was sarcastic with me and kind of let me be sarcastic with him back. And I think, I think him, I have to give him credit. I think him doing that really, really helped, honestly. Well, absolutely. I think what is the best for me, and this goes for TI5 and some of the interviews we've seen so far in TI6, uh, you with uh, the captain of Execretion, um, which was, I thought, a really candid uh, interview. I mean, you just had him laughing the entire time, and he was like, <laughs> we're just going to win. And, and yeah, you're not asking, like, okay, so your, your timings on your battle fury are just, you're, <laughs> they're not there. What do you right. what do you plan on doing? You're just right. asking, like, so what do you do to motivate your team? Like, what? Right. Well, uh, yeah. And I, I, I would say from, you know, because one of the hidden things, or one of the things that most people don't like to acknowledge about this game is that the casual players... Are, they don't understand the game on the level that professional players do as well. Right. They just don't. And the, maybe the more interesting thing to us is kind of learning what goes on in the the, the psychological interactions between teammates, mm-hmm. the the relationships between teammates, the attitudes that are try that they try to foster. And we we get that with you as an interviewer. We you know yeah we get what we wouldn't get with somebody who who knows a lot of Dota. And I and I'm going to use an example from last year because we haven't seen a lot of your interviews yet because TI has just begun this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, was with March from South Korea where you got him just screaming uh, <laughs> in, in the microphone. And I don't think if if I were to have interviewed him and been like March, you're an excellent player. Like that Lincoln Sphere stopped that spell from hitting you. I don't think he would have screamed about it. He would have been like, "Yeah, my team did very well," and it would have been like, "Thank you for the interview." But but you not you know not necessarily addressing what happened in the game, but what's happening around the game uh, got him to scream in 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 pure hype or optimism and and yeah. happiness. You know what I mean? And and that is something that you know, is valuable. Absolutely. We, we drone on and on and on four days a week about (laughs) item builds and about how to play the game. Right. We do want somebody once a year that can just say, how do you guys get along? How do you deal with a 15 year old on your team? Uh, How do you do this? How do you do that? On the flip side, do you, do you feel like you've learned a lot about Dota since beginning this? I, I do. And I don't, I think I am, I will be honest and say, I am so frustrated with myself because I don't, I actually hold myself to a very high standard as far as preparation for these interviews and like I I have like two or three notepads filled with notes but it's all about what you said it's all about I like to interview them as a whole person and as a whole player um and I'm frustrated that I don't know the game well enough to also be able to ask some of those some of those more specific you know in-game strategy Mm -hmm. yeah and I I but there are people doing that though yeah I don't think you need to worry about that there are other people that are handling that department I'm, and I'm sorry, well, and they just aren't. They've been doing it for years. They've been doing it right. for ten years, handling that department. And, but they also, on the flip side, just I think oftentimes, and I won't say that every you know uh, content producer or interviewer out there is this way, but there are people out there that don't deal with people on that human level, or aren't ca- I mean, aren't, aren't as capable as you would be in that position. Well, you have, I mean, you have a college education on it. I mean, I know the classes that you've had to take because I'm in a very similar program. Um, I, I mean, you have traditional training, you have on, on the job training with talking to people and evoking a response. And I agree with Valve who gives, excuse my language, a shit that you don't know about Dota 2. You know about people. And that's, what's most interesting is I want to know these players on a personal level. Well, it's good to humanize the game. Yeah. If you can humanize the player, like look at the famous football players, you know, when they're humanized, they get a huge following. Um, it's not that they're great at football. Yeah, that helps. But when they mm-hmm. become a human, and you can actually be like, I, I, well, I, I agree I, with that. It's them. the job of the press to const- – It's the jo- well, not that it's the job of the press, but the press takes on the role of creating a narrative. And I, I think that's what mm-hmm. Casey brings to it. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you, what what's different – what is different about interviewing Dota players? What, what are some of the key differences that you you experience with them versus, say, you know, your average interviewer or your average interviewee or maybe your average – you know, sports, you know, traditional sports interviewee? Uh, well, first, I, I just have to say how much I appreciate you guys saying what you just said, because I, I have so much respect for the community and for the game that part of the reason I don't ask those questions is also that, you know, when I dip my toe in and try to play, I still don't, I'm still, I, I recognize that I'm not anywhere near the kind of capacity to ask those kinds of questions. So I, I, 
I really always hope that I'm giving the community something that they haven't necessarily heard yet. So I appreciate you guys saying that because I still, you know, I still get tweets from people like, why would you ask that question? Why wouldn't you ask about his MMR with blah, blah, blah. And, <laughs> and, and I just want to say, because that's not genuine. That's not, so and I appreciate that. I don't even really want to hear it. I don't even care what their <laughs> MMR is. Like, I don't care about all that. Like, but, but keep doing what you're doing. Please don't delve into the heroin that is Dota 2 because you will lose your job. You will be in a dark place again. You will be eating Ben and Jerry's except in front of a computer screen. It'll oh, be dear. bad. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, so just stay away from it and just keep doing what you're doing. No, I, I do appreciate that. I, I think, and, and to answer your question just about kind of what's different about your interviewing the players, it has evolved a little bit over the last couple of years. I think at first, the biggest challenge to me was talking to people who I think genuinely weren't sure they could trust me and and I don't I don't blame them for that I think when you have somebody come in who who says out loud like you know this isn't a game that I play but I respect you guys you're like yeah okay um so I, I get that that was the biggest challenge for me was you know I I have experienced interviewing people who I have to earn their trust so I I, I did get that but this was completely different because I think I think to a certain extent there was a little bit like you know in the Dota 2 world they understood that they were a big deal, but why would anybody outside of that want to talk to us about that? Like if they don't get it. So that, that was an extra challenge that was different. Um, I also think the difference is, is that I'm, I'm interviewing people who really for all intents and purposes are celebrities, but they, they aren't usually they, when I interview celebrities, they're overly trained. They have, they have publicists, they have people training yes. them for an interview. They have a whole support staff. Uh, this yes. is something that we've talked about a lot. Uh, and then you, you interview a player and they're like, yeah, it was good. My, yeah. my team right. is really strong this year. Right. Uh, we have a good right. leader. Yeah. And it's, it's hard. I know. Continue. It's please. really hard. And, and, and my goal, my goal is always just to make them comfortable. And I don't care if, you know, if I have 10 minutes with someone and they don't become comfortable with me until the last 30 seconds, that's okay. Like I, I the, I, I always want to remind people, and I, I say this now in case anybody is listening who ever will be interviewed, my goal is to make you look good. My goal is not to, it's not about me. It's not about like, oh, I'm going to prove to the world that I know what I'm talking about and I'm an interviewer. It's, <laughs> it's, it's how can I conduct this interview in a way that, that makes you feel the best version of yourself. And so the biggest difference is that with these players, that's a different thing for each of them. And it's been a challenge that I welcome. It's made me a better interviewer. It's made me um, more compassionate, I think, and a little bit more understanding of where people are coming from when, you know, especially when they've just lost a match and I'm like, hey, how you feeling? And they're like, how do you think I'm feeling? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, I just lost $150,000 because I didn't buy an item in a game right. and it ended and you don't even understand that. Right. <laughs> you right. know, yeah. <laughs> Oh, like I think what I really need to do and I this is part of the problem that I, I really wish people in the community understood like I what I would love to do is is set aside like an eight hour day where I can sit down with someone and and play and have them literally kind of walk me through and when I do something they can explain okay this is why that happened because even now when I'm watching I understand in a very I don't know, overview sense. I understand what I'm seeing, but I still can't pick out. I would never be able to pick out like, oh, it's because you didn't level up at that one point or, oh, it's because sure. in the draft you made a huge mistake when the other team blocked. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, those are the I, things I, I wish I understood. I want to harken but... back to your, your interview with uh, Morgan Freeman where I'm sure it felt like <laughs> a million years. Like, I'm sure that interview <laughs> felt really long and really cringy, right? When you felt, found out he was asleep and oh, like totally. Time, time totally slowed, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, when you're playing Dota, time totally slows. So when you're watching it, it's going by a lot quicker than when you're playing it. It actually feels right. a lot slower when you're playing it. So I definitely think that that would that would help you. But I've been playing yeah. two years and I am still a scrub. We like we this is a this is a newbie newbie meaning new you know whatever Dota two right. podcast and we've been playing for seven hundred days. Uh, so it's like. Eight hours, you can get like what off lane means, what mid means, what safe lane means, counters, sure. whatever, items and stuff like that. But it's just, it's such a complicated game. I mean, it's, it's, imp it's impossible. It's just so hard to master. I mean, but I, I do think, think it would be fun. I a little too hard to, I think part of my problem is, is that I try too hard to understand 
every little tiny detail mm. rather than taking a step back and just trying to understand in general what this but only in the last couple of years have I really started understanding that if you're a support player, for example, you're not going to be the flashy guy who makes the game winning move. That took you're me ahead a of me. Yeah. You're ahead of me because I. Think you're an offensive lineman <laughs> yeah, uh, at that point. You are, <laughs> you're you already you already know more than I do. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think it would be really valuable to sit down with. Either somebody that is, you know, of a lower skill well, bracket or we, a higher skill what bracket. What we do is right. we, we, we pair you up with Sir Action Slacks and we sit you guys down together and we let him explain the game to you. Yeah. That might be good. <laughs> It'd be funny. It'd definitely be we'll it, it. It'd be funny yeah. because he would have you pick Omni Knight and he'd have yeah. and and uh <laughs> And uh, yeah, it would it would it'd be funny. I don't know how much you'd learn, but it would it would be it would be really, really funny. Um so I want to address one thing. Last year, you you promised some Timbersaw thing that you're gonna dress up as Timbersaw. I did, didn't I? You did, but but the great thing is you're dressed as Timbersaw now. We are an audio only podcast, yeah. but Casey is holding her her promise. You are dressed in Timbersaw. How hard was it for you to make the costume you're currently in? Oh, it was so hard. I mean, I spent the last six months getting it just right. Yeah, I, I figured. Do you have the blades and every? I mean, we we can't see it, but we know because you told us you're you're yeah. you're doing the Timbersaw oh, yeah. cosplay well, for the interview. Well, one of the blades is a little dull because I had to steal it out of my neighbor's garage, but oh, the okay. other one <laughs> is like ready and raring to go. And you know, I think just to kind of really get into the mindset, anytime I see a tree. I just kind of like collapse <laughs> in real life, and I don't explain it to people. I just, I just say, oh, well, it's, it's method kind of acting. A, you, kind you of need a story to, from a long time ago. You need to stay in character, it. you know, <laughs> at all times. Speaking of acting, are you traditionally trained? Um, did you take any acting classes in high school or anything like that? No, I, I did improv, so I performed okay. improv comedy for about seven years. Oh wow. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, did not, did not train, um, and actually, I wasn't very good at improv. To be honest with you, I, I, I'm good at improvising in general. I feel like that's a strength of mine. But, but doing an actual full show of improv where, like, you get a suggestion from the audience and you say, like, oh, what's something I can't fit in a bread box? And someone yells, fish. And you're like, this is a scene about fish. And then everybody just kind of starts <laughs> creating a scene. I tend to overthink it where it's like, oh, I should do this. No, I should do this. And and when I'm given a few more parameters, I do much better, where I understand, okay, there are some boundaries and some rules, and then I can just kind of let loose, which is why I like working TI, is that I'm given, you know, here are the parameters you're going to go, and here's how long you have, and you're going to talk to fans here, and then over here you're going to go and, and talk cosplay. Like, then within that, I, I know that I have some freedom to have fun, and that's that's the best part, honestly. Well, it, you did have some success with improv with the uh, the Tom and Tina sketch with the the great sketch experiment that Jib Jab did. Right. We I, well, we you did your research. I, Look at you. And we watched that before uh, yeah. before doing the interview. Very <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh out loud. And I mean, it was a, definitely a much. Uh, it was like you you could tell that you've come a long way in your career since then. That well, like thank you. that you have definitely like you were good. Don't get me like you won. Obviously, you were good, but. You've improved a, a whole lot, and that's cool to see that you're not just like I'm good enough now, and I'm just gonna stay <laughs> this way. That you like even over even since TI three, like just the way you've improved within the Dota community is like, you know, you've you've always been genuine, but now you're getting to the point where you're so comfortable with what you're doing that you're getting these players who are you who are playing Dota twelve hours a day. They don't right. they their interaction is with their team. You know what I mean? They don't really right. interact much with other people, and yet you're getting them to laugh and to talk. And to talk about interactions they're having with their players. I mean, I know I'm going back to a, <laughs> yeah. a previous topic, but it's appreciated. You know yeah. what I mean? And it, it's it's cool to see. Well, this is what Roland does. When we get somebody who's normal on here, he always brings it back to Dota. And, and all I want to talk <laughs> about is the other stuff. Because, like, what what was it like working with John Landis for that? Is what where, where the real reason I brought it up. Uh, John oh, Landis. John Landis. That was, that was really crazy honestly that was actually a, a, a sketch that my husband wrote um, that was a sketch comedy group that he was the director of and he wrote and submitted and did not think anything was going to come of it and John Landis is actually the one out of all the submissions who selected the six he wanted to film and um, so being directed by him was was crazy he was very smart and very um, very good at telling us when something needed to be changed but giving us the confidence that 
that we that we could do it. So that was an insane experience. I mean, for those who don't know who John Landis is, I'm sure some of our audience is younger side. I don't know who John side. Landis is. John Landis was the director of Animal House. Oh, He was okay. the director oh, okay. of The Blues okay. Brothers. All right. Some Belushi films. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, yeah. th- th- this man knows comedy. Okay. Yeah. So well, he, uh, that's that's a, a big feather in the cap. I, I mean, is he... Is he like? Is he super? Is he super funny himself? Uh, he's a, he's more of a dry a dry humor. He's not like a waka 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 kind of yeah. a funny. Um, <laughs> but he's he's my favorite kind of funny, which is it takes you a second to realize he was being funny, and then you're like, oh yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, similar to to your your style of humor, I'd say it's it's pretty sarcastic at, at points and and dry. <laughs> and some of the players are like taken like, huh? And then yeah. they're like, oh, jokes, yeah. Oh no, <laughs> not, not it's the, that exists. Humor and and laughing and, and not emotions, though. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, any any big TI plans that you can uh, like hint at for us, or is anything that you know are you, are you super excited for or looking forward to? I'm I'm honestly I'm, I'm excited for all of it. There are there are a lot of things we have up our sleeve which I'm really excited about, and I can't talk about of it course, yet. Of we understand. Um, but um, I th- I think I think it's going to be I think what's going to be great this year is that I think we have more things planned because we have all worked together so much now in the last couple of years. So we're able to plan ahead a couple of um, different things, which is great. And um, and I'm, I'm kind of hoping I can do more with the players. And, and a goal of mine has always been to try to find a way to be able to do interviews with them throughout the year, honestly. Like, that's what I – that that's my goal. I just love – I love pulling things out of people that they wouldn't normally say. Like, I just – I really look forward to that. And the thing that makes me the most nervous heading into TI are the player interviews. You know, anytime uh, this year, I think I'll be interviewing the the winners each time. Awesome. And the other problem that I don't think people realize is that I'm not able to watch very much of the games because I'm out. Bring in the hype. Stuff. Bring in yeah, the hype. Bring in the hype. And I'm <laughs> yeah. doing and we're taping bits. And so I'm trying to, you know, get snippets here and there. Um, but that's another reason I don't ask a lot of like, how, why puck, man? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, so, so I hope my biggest thing is I just hope I'm giving the community something that, that they want and that they enjoy and that they're benefiting from. I tend to focus on, you know, people for the most part are very kind to me, which I really appreciate, but I tend to focus on the trolls that I do end up hearing from. And like last year at TI, I actually felt pretty good. I I did not feel very good about the job I did at TI4. Um, That was kind of a transition year for me where I was trying to figure out, like, how do I do this now that I've done it once, but I still don't know very much. And so TI4, I really worked hard on preparing, and I felt really, I felt pretty good about it. And then the only thing that I focused on was someone who tweeted um, a, a Reddit thread that they had started about how terrible I was. And... I read it and I was like, Oh God. And like, that's all I focused on for the first week after TI. And so, um, I know, I know. F the naysayers. Uh, F F the naysayers. (laughs) Uh, I will tell, I will tell you that, you know, getting you on the show, just having the prospect of, I mean, we're in the middle of TI right now, as all of you know, Casey's extremely busy and, and we were, we were definitely not, counting on having Casey on the show uh, before TI6 because hell you're you're busy like you're busier than <laughs> yeah. a lot of the talent they invited um, and to have you come on was was truly exciting for us because you're the only person that's in this scene that isn't in this scene at the same time that you you mm-hmm. you have like a, a special pass to come in <laughs> and you're you're accepted <laughs> and then and then you can go about and do do your your daily thing and then then come back but Going back to you talking about wanting to do interviews throughout the year, just hit us up. You want to talk to a player? <laughs> well, Casey Atchison hosts, hosts Defense of the Patients for this special episode where we reap in all the downloads. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? And of course, yeah. And you can get what you want <laughs> by talking her on to the, the players. Air, like, yeah, like a true gentleman. I just think we should like surprise them with it so that they're on and you're like, hey, man. And then all of a sudden I just go, hey, yo. Yeah. <laughs> I hate trees. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, we promised Casey we wouldn't eat up too much of her time because she is super busy. We and we yeah. do appreciate you coming on, and it's been it. I, you've you've got a fascinating career. It, it's it it's admirable. It's it, you you have a great story. 
Um, it, I, I'm excited to come and see you guys do more interviews. I'm really looking forward to it and really appreciate you coming on. Yes, thank you so much, Casey. Uh, oh my God, thank you. Where, this has where, been great. Can, where can Dota people find you? Where Where's a good place for Dota people to say, say they want to watch you on Q13? Oh, well, they can go to q13fox.com. We stream the show in the mornings. So the entire thing is streamed live from 6 to 10 a.m. 6 uh, PST to 10 a.m. Right. PST? Okay, That's awesome. That's right. And then, and then um, all the stories that I do, I post online. And I'm pretty, I'm really active on my face, my professional Facebook page and Twitter. So I post a lot of, a lot of stuff there. And um, yeah, I just, thank you for being so patient with me. I know that... Um, my schedule was ridiculous and I felt terrible that it took me so long to be able to do this, but it just, it means a lot that you guys would care enough to interview me at all. Honestly, I'm flattered and, um, I'm just really grateful that I get to be a part of this community at all. And I just, I just hope I can keep bringing interesting interviews and, uh, and keep representing you guys the way you deserve. Well, you got the golden ticket in my book. You, yeah. you, 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 can, you can come and leave as you please. And don't listen to Reddit. <laughs> yeah. Re- and Reddit is the most toxic place on earth. Okay? It, it if you really wanna, is. If you want to talk about a toxic, like really. You should have been. The, it, the it's first worse than your toxic you did, park. Yeah, should have been toxic Reddit, not toxic park. And where you're just in front of a green screen and Reddit's behind you. And you're just like, <laughs> this place. Holy shit. You'll get Look cancer faster this. here yeah. than at a nuclear yeah. power plant. No, All it, right. it, it's, it's, it's a place no one should go. <laughs> And too many talent get wrapped up in it, and I see them like send out tweets where it's like, "I'm sorry that you guys don't like me," and it's like, it's a loud minority, is all it is. Yeah, right. and I a do think it's a minority. vocal minority because I think the most, I think most of us are here appreciating just the fact that you're bringing a, a, a level of professionalism and production value to this to this scene and to this event um, that we that we're enjoying at the very least, and it, we're and yeah. it, you know, it's kind of it, honestly, it's kind of lousy of all of us. To not be on there combating that. Yeah, no, it is. It is lousy. I mean, in order for esports to grow, uh, going back to something we brought up earlier, I think these players do need to be, you know, trained for these interviews to get more fans, right? Like more fans, and and you being brought on by Valve, I think, was absolutely intended because we need more money in this. Well, it was a brilliant move. It was. It was a brilliant move. Yeah, because we need somebody who is outside, who is professional, and we know is going to deliver something professional because. We all can't, you know, stick to living in our mother's basement forever. Like we need to move out and get jobs into the daylight, and then and then uh, we can maybe make this esports thing uh, sustainable for a lot of well, young let people. Let me let me ask you a question then, because I get I, I something that I struggle with is that I get different different feedback from the community about whether they want to be recognized by um, by mainstream, whether they want ESPN to consider them a sport, whether they oh, want... Oh, this is a whole can of worms. <laughs> yeah, I know. And so, and so I, I, I am so careful to respect what everybody wants. You know, I, like, for example, I have a photographer I work with um, at Q13, and he's going to, he's going to come on Monday and put together a little piece about, um, about the international, because I've had him do it every year, and he does a great job. And I love being able to talk on the show afterwards and say, hey, everyone, like, if you haven't heard about it, this is it. And some people are like, oh, great, like, you're giving us more exposure. And other people are like, no, we don't want to be considered sports and we don't want to be mainstream. You know, and that's I, fine. I just don't want to, I don't want to, like, No, that's not fine. I, I, you okay, know, I want, to, I want this to be <laughs> oh, my no. career, Casey. I want, to, I want this to be my career. I want, to, I want esports to we, grow. Okay. We need professionalism. We, we should couch everything we say here Ugh, in just that Roland and I topic. are both of the opinion that the mainstream media recognizing it and kind of bringing I, 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 the, the okay uh, the esports community will see this as an offensive statement yes they will but i believe that the mainstream media somewhat legitimizes what's going on here i i, I know Got it. That, I, you know i'm sorry i like i'm sorry that that's the way that it is but mm-hmm. but it kind of is i, I unfortunately mm-hmm. that that's how it is I, you, you know q13's not doing esports stories because there aren't right. a lot of them, and because the community oftentimes rejects any kind of outside attention. Oh, but when we make it to the the front page of New York Times, that's at the top of Reddit. And look at uh, us; we're at the uh, we're at the top of New York Times. So it's like when we get the success, when we get that mainstream success, we embrace it. But mm-hmm. if 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 we don't have it, we don't need it. We don't want it. If well, do we, you if, think the 
fear is that uh, this is what I wonder. I wonder if the fear is not having control over the message because it's one thing to be recognized, but it's another to be recognized and then realize that means that the mainstream can say whatever they, that's they a, want. That's a very about mature it. way of looking I, at I, it. I think some of it's that. Maybe. I, I think some of them fear outside criticism of the event in general because very yeah. often a lot of people are, are upset they get, because, yes, an esport isn't, it's not football. These guys aren't out doing the, the level of physical activity that other, you know, competitors are physical right the level right. of physical activity yeah now a, there are definitely arguments for like how competitive it is and what kind of rigorous schedule goes into it and, and yada 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 and i, I i'm and with the list them. goes on and on i'm and with on them to an there. extent yeah um but i i i also suspect that a lot of it's wrapped up in censorship i i, I think they are very concerned about uh how polished it has to be because i think a lot of these guys are a, a little more on the immature oh. side or i think some people are on the immature side um, and I think that what they, I think they worry that they're not going to be able to enjoy it the way that they have, the way that they've grown accustomed to seeing everything online. That, that's, that's kind of my two cents of it. I agree. And we lost Casey for just a second. We're going to get her right back because Skype is being quite the, uh, quite the, quite the, so we're going to call her back and we're going to even have this on air. <laughs> Skype crashed. Um, and you guys can even hear the, the call. Hey, sorry, Casey. Hello? Skype, Skype crash right in the middle of that. We're just going to keep on going. Uh, uh, but anyway, right. I, I suspect a lot of it's tied up in censorship uh, is, is the other aspect to it. I, I think they worry about censorship overall with esports. But, I did not think of that. And we're right. young. We're young and we want, uh, we want to, like, I don't know. You, you always look at ESPN and everything like that. And it's just so structured. And everybody has the suit and tie on. And they're talking about this yeah. and that, you know. But everybody still has the suit and tie on. It's you know. Well, I just... I, because I think Valve's embracing moving forward and getting in, I... into the mainstream. And you know, if that's kind of the direction that Valve's going, and it's mm -hmm. their game, and if you want to keep playing it, then you might have to you I... might have to suck it up and deal with it. I think <laughs> if the talent was like ESPN's coming in, this is how much you're going to be making, and they look at the offer slip and they're like, okay, yeah, definitely. I won't swear. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I will definitely accept this. This is totally good with me. Yeah. So I I don't know. We we definitely. I th I think most people agree with us. They just don't understand what what we mean when we when we say like <laughs> that mainstream's okay. That, like we want to legitimize this to make it grow. Well, and it and helps continue. it grow. And yes, and like yeah. podcasts like ours, there can be more of those, and more people can be doing having jobs that are involved in in esports in general. Um, you know, not not even just Dota two. But we've eaten up so much of your time. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh my gosh! Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And uh, if yeah. you guys want to follow Casey, she's on Twitter as well, at Casey Atchison. Uh, it's A-I-T-C-H-I-S-O-N for those of you folks up in Seattle that may not be familiar with it. Uh, and you, But by now they should. Hell, they're Dota fans. They've been seeing her at every TI that there mm -hmm. is. Uh, and if you guys want to follow us, we're at .p underscore show on Twitter. Defenseofthepatients.com is the website. Check us out on uh, iTunes just by searching Defense of the Patients. Leave us some more reviews. There's another one that popped up on there, but we'll get to it a yes. little bit later. Remember, we're going to be at Royal Gaming Cafe uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, maybe Friday. It looks like Tsunami is going to be joining us. You can come meet us. We're going to be recording our shows live from Royal Gaming Cafe. Uh, that, you can come record with us. You can come play Dota with us, Casey. Yeah. If you want to pop into Royal Gaming Cafe, I'll give I'll, I'll play a game with you, and I'll I'll, I'll show you like <laughs> this is a support, this is a mid, this is a carry. I'm terrible at all of them, uh, and and yeah, we, we we can get into that. And that's uh, at 4341 University Way in Seattle, Washington. Apparently, it's, about it's four a nice miles. place. It, it, is that it, a nice place in Seattle? The, the, this this address, University Way. Like, yeah, that address is right in the U District next to U Dub. Yeah. Well, there we go. So that's that's a, fun, that's a fun area. That's where we're going to be holding our 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 meetup uh, after each day for TI. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so, yeah. very cool. About seven thirty p.m. Everybody, if you want to come check us out there, defense the patients gmail dot com is the email. Those are all the plugs. You guys know how to support the show. We look forward to seeing y'all up in Seattle. And uh, so this is going to wrap it up. Until next time, this is Cyphus for Roland and Casey saying good luck and Godspeed. <laughs>